Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to another edition of our high level workflow series where we're walking through how to set up workflows. We're gonna help you set up your triggers, your actions, everything you need to do to start automating all the manual tasks that you're doing now so you can be more efficient and spend less time getting stuff done. So today we're gonna be talking about one of my favorite actions available in the high level workflows and that is webhooks. With the webhooks action, you're able to open up a whole new universe of automation. So now high level can speak to other pieces of software using Zapier or Zaps, and then these two pieces of software can speak to each other and exchange data. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video in our high level workflow series where we're helping you set up your workflows, how to set up your triggers, your actions off of those triggers so that you can start to automate a lot of the stuff that you're doing manually like right now so that you can do things a lot faster and more efficiently and get things done. So today I'm super excited because we're talking about one of my favorite actions in workflows and that is webhooks. Using webhooks with high level allows you to let the, or help the high level system speak to other pieces of software so that you can create automations between those two different softwares. So it really opens up a door to be able to do a lot of cool things with high level and it really, this is where I nerd out. So today we're gonna be talking about workflows and so let's jump into it. So if you're looking for workflows and this is the new menu view, you would find the workflows under automation. If you're looking at the old menu items, then you're going to find the menu item that says workflows, and that will take you to the workflow area, and then you will start creating your workflow. So let's go ahead and create the workflow, and then we're going to click start from scratch, and then we're gonna click create new workflow, and you'll create whatever your trigger is. In this example, I'm gonna show you a couple of uh, workflows that we've actually done, or zaps that we've set up using webhooks. So one of those is we are in our coaching program. We have a lot of different uh, what we call builders. So we have our perfect avatar builder. We have our million dollar message builder. And these are basically forms that people fill out. And then that will give them information that they can tweak in the future and really iterate to really dial in their personal, their perfect avatars and their million dollar messages and all of our other builders. So that's a form. So what we're gonna do here is our trigger, just to show you an example is we're going to have the form B, we're gonna do the million dollar message builder submission. That tells us exactly what this trigger does. It's gonna be a CRM tri uh, trigger type because it's a form. Then I'm going to come in here and I'm going to select the form submitted as the trigger and then add a filter to only be the million dollar message here. So the million dollar message coaching here, and then that's going to be our trigger. I'm going to save that. So now we know exactly what triggers this workflow. And then our first action is going to be our webhook that we're going to send to a zap in Zapier. And then that's going to create, and that's going to be our trigger. So the action is going to be the webhook in high level, and that's going to be a trigger in your zap. And then that trigger is going to have actions that piggyback off of that inside of Zapier. I hope that makes sense. So I'm going to click the plus button here, and then we're going to search for a webhook. And then that is going to bring up this, these fields here. We're going to give that webhook a name for this. It's going to create MDM document so what we're doing here is once somebody fills out their million dollar message information we build that into a google doc so now they have that documented and they can save it into their google drive now so they can come back to that later on and tweak it and iterate it until they really get it dialed in so now we need to grab the url of the webhook trigger from zapier to do that we're going to head over to Zapier and I'm gonna act like this is the first time I've ever built this and then we'll actually go into my Zap so I can show you an example. But if we were doing this for the very first time, I would come in to create Zap. My trigger, remember the action is gonna be the webhook in high level, but that's gonna be a trigger in your Zap. So I'm gonna call this, we're gonna look for webhook, webhooks by Zapier. And then the triggering event is gonna to be to catch a hook. That's how we get that URL that we're gonna put back into high level. So catch a hook, and then we're gonna click continue. And then we can copy that URL 
and then take it back over to high level and we can paste that URL into the URL and then save it. And then now what's going to happen is when someone fills out this form, it's going to push that information, all of the information from that form submission into our into Zapier, into that trigger. And then we can, again, trigger actions off of that trigger in Zapier. So let's show you an example of one that we've done for our own, a couple of our businesses. So this is our coaching, our million dollar message document. And again, what we want to do is our clients fill out their information. We want to create a document from that that they can save in their Google Drive and they can come back and iterate it later on. So what we're doing here is we're catching the hook. Okay, so there, our trigger is always going to be our webhooks by Zapier in our Zap. We're going to catch a hook and then we're going to set up that trigger. So we, what we did is we copied that URL. We pasted it into the URL and the action, the webhook action, and then we saved it. And now... That information now pushes into the zap here, and then we can trigger other actions in other pieces of software. So for us, we want to create a Google Doc. So we'd selected Google Doc as our app, create a document from text is our action, and then we choose the account that we want to create that document in. So we'll just create that into our account, and then our clients will always have action um, access to that, and we can send them the link to that document and they can create a copy. So then we're going to set up the action. And this is where you'll pull in the information from the webhook into whatever pieces of software or system that you're, you're trying to create the action. For us, again, we're creating a document in Google Drive. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to create a name for that document. And so what we've done here is we pull in information from the webhook. So if I wanted to do this for the first time, see, we've pulled in first name, we've pulled in last name. This is text that we just put in there to tell us this is the million dollar message and then the date created. So if I wanted to pull this information in, I just click into the field here, scroll down to the information that I want to add into that field. And then I just click in and this is pulling information from that webhook. So I click that and that will put the information from the form that was submitted into the document name there. I'm not going to do that because I've already done it. And then the next thing that we would do for this particular action is create the document content. So this is going to create the name of the document and this is going to be all the content that's actually inside of the document. So some of this is text that we've created. So we've put all of our form fields into uh, the document so that we know what the information is about. So this is my business category. And then if we wanted to pull the business category that our clients submitted, what we would do is we would click into the field here and then we click show options and then we'd scroll. We can actually do business category, search for that particular field and then click on this to actually populate the information that the actual client filled out, okay? So you do that, we do that for all of our different fields that we have in the form. So we put all of our form fields in there and then we, we pull in the information from the webhook for each of the form fields that our client submitted. And then what you can do, you choose the folder that you want to create that document in, and then you can test the action by clicking retest or retest and continue and go and see, go to that folder that you created the document and see if that folder was created, make sure that all the information is populated in there. And if that's the case, then you're ready to move on to the next step, which for us, we add them to another workflow inside of high level. And that workflow sends them an email and it has a link to this document in it. So now they have access to that document and they can save it in their own Google Drive account. And now they can access that and iterate on that document over time. Let's show you another example real quick where we're using webhooks. So this is our another business that we have where we source, train, and hire virtual assistants for different business owners to help them do prospecting using a tool called Flowchat. What we've done here is, again, we're catching a hook. Remember, the action, it's an action in high level, and then that is going to create a trigger in Zap that you'll set up. For this one, this is our hiring process. And so we're hiring virtual assistants now. So the form that would be the trigger for this particular Zap would be our VA application form. Now, once somebody fills out that VA application form, then it's gonna send the information from that form 
to the webhook, which is here. And then if we wanted to set that trigger up, we just copy that URL, paste that in the URL of the webhook. And then now it's gonna send that information over to the zap. Okay, so you can then trigger another action. And this is a totally different action. So it gives you another example to kind of look at here. So we're catching the information from the webhook. And then what we're doing here is we're pushing this person into our training program or our on-demand video training. So we have a wish list member account, which is a basically a WordPress plugin. And what we're the action event here is we're adding or updating a new member. So once they fill out that form, they're becoming a member in our training program. And we have our wish list account set up. And then we can again pull in the information from the webhook to populate the information in the new piece of software or the new action item that we want to create. So again, if we wanted to do this for the first time, we wanted to create a username in our wish list member training program. What we would do is we'd click into the field and then we'd find the the field from the webhook to populate the information with. Here we've pulled in the email address to create the username in our wish list member accounts. So then again, the email address, you can pull that in as well. And then if it's a true existing member, then you can mark that as true. And then the first name, you'll bring in that information, last name, and then you choose the level of the wish list membership that you want to give them access to. All right, so this is just an example. And then you can test that action. You can send a test to see if this actually creates a member in our wish list account. Once you sent that test, if it does, everything looks good. You turn on the zap and you're ready to go. Those are two examples of how you can use webhooks in your high level workflows, webhook actions to create automation with other pieces of software outside of high level. It's a super powerful tool that you have in your tool belt when you're a high level user. So definitely start playing around with some of this stuff because this is how you can create some really powerful automations. So if you got some value out of this video, be sure and give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and we will see you in our next workflow series video and I will see you guys soon, thanks.